Cyberpunk 2077 is probably my most anticipated game right now alongside Death Stranding. On the surface level, we're talking about a cyberpunk RPG game developed by the same guys who brought you Witcher 3, one of the best fantasy RPGs of all time. Just the very idea of CD Projekt Red stepping into the realm of cyberpunk, my favorite genre, gets my heart racing. But even more exciting is the knowledge that Cyberpunk 2077 is probably going to be very different from your usual sci-fi RPGs. And it all starts with the source material that the game draws from, the unique world of Cyberpunk 2020, the tabletop RPG created by Mike Pondsmith. One of the the first things that both Mike Pondsmith and CD Projekt Red have emphasized is that the world of cyberpunk shouldn't be associated with sci-fi. This isn't the type of world where you can expect things like spaceships and aliens. Instead, all of the concepts and technology in cyberpunk are based on the not-so-distant future, things you could see becoming reality to a degree decades down the line. This distinction was vital to the Cyberpunk 2020 tabletop game, and it's going to carry over to the 2077 video game. Now, Cyberpunk 2020 was first conceived by Mike Pondsmith during the late 1980s, so a lot of the tech in the tabletop represents the 80s vision of the future. It's all very retro-futuristic. The 2077 video game, on the other hand, will represent our modern-day vision of the future. A lot has changed in our real world since the 1980s, and 2077 will design a not-so-distant future that will reflect those changes. The game will be futuristic rather than retro-futuristic. That's part of the reason why CD Projekt Red decided to jump ahead over 50 years, so that the technology could evolve like it did in real life. But regardless of aesthetic, this not-so-distant future idea that is so intrinsic to the cyberpunk genre already draws a big line between Cyberpunk 2077 and many other sci-fi games, as the latter tend to take us to the very distant future, rather than the not-so-distant future. That's not to say that Cyberpunk 2077 is the only game of its kind. There are other cyberpunk RPGs out there. But if you think about it, there aren't a lot of them either. Especially as of late, cyberpunk has become one of the most underrepresented genres in the video game industry, which is a shame because the atmosphere and aesthetic is so compelling. The last game of its kind that I can remember is Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which is a fine game, but it wasn't a game changer or anything. It did a lot of things right, but it also underwhelmed in a lot of ways. Before that, older games that come to mind include prequels like Deus Ex Human Revolution, the original Deus Ex, as well as the all-too-famous System Shock and System Shock 2. They were great for their time and they still hold up pretty well, but these games also tend to show their age. And beyond that, as far as great high-profile AAA cyberpunk RPGs go, these titles are pretty much all I can think of, which is kind of sad. So while Cyberpunk 2077 isn't 100% unique in its concept, it's still a rare treasure in that it takes on such an underrepresented genre in the video game industry. We haven't really had a truly awe-inspiring cyberpunk RPG in a very long time, and Cyberpunk 2077 seems to be on its way to scratch that itch. CD Projekt Red might finally give the cyberpunk genre the modern AAA video game treatment that it deserves. Now, even within the cyberpunk genre, I think Cyberpunk 2077 has the potential to stand out in a lot of ways. Let's start with the fact that both Mike Pondsmith and CD Projekt Red have agreed that at its core, cyberpunk isn't about saving the world, contrary to popular belief. It's not about taking down mega corporations, uncovering grand conspiracies, ridding the world of decay, or doing these epic world-changing quests. Things like mega corporations, conspiracies, and decay are all inherent features to the cyberpunk genre. Fighting these elements is as futile as trying to get rid of magic or fighting gods in fantasy. These are genre-defining elements that you don't really want to take on, but rather just accept them for what they are. So instead, what Mike Pondsmith and CD Projekt Red emphasize is that cyberpunk is more about saving yourself. It's about life within the high-tech, low-life circumstances that plague society. It's about rising from the gutter and making a name for yourself 
to survive as long as you can in this unforgiving world. And what this does is pave the way for a deep, personal type of storytelling that no other cyberpunk RPG has really tackled on a AAA scale. Games like the Deus Ex series are all about these grand conspiracies from the perspective of a highly positioned law enforcer, which at the same time emphasize the grand politics of a cyberpunk setting such as the moral implications of cybernetic augmentations. Things like the street stories of people surviving in an unforgiving dystopian world sort of take a back seat and act as decoration for the conspiracies and politics. The result is a more impersonal experience. You're really just a third party entity watching from outside and looking into this setting rather than a true participant of the world. There is a disconnect that doesn't allow you to relate to the people living in the streets and in the gutter, which is the majority of the population. So Cyberpunk 2077 will take the complete reverse approach. It's the conspiracies and politics that will all be in the background to decorate and enhance the street stories of people fighting to survive. You will actually be a participant in the world and its street stories, and you will go through the process of rising up from the gutter to reach as close to an elevated status as you can get. The result is that Cyberpunk 2077 will be a more personal journey for the player. It's a side to cyberpunk and storytelling in general that you don't see very often in mainstream video games. To top it all off, Cyberpunk 2077 will have a distinct focus on style and attitude that few other games in the cyberpunk genre have. More often than not, a cyberpunk setting is associated with decay and it's all very depressing. Movies like Blade Runner and games like Deus Ex are perfect examples of this. They both star a brooding protagonist living in a grim world, and everything stays grim from beginning to end. But where Cyberpunk 2077 will distinguish itself is in its intent to highlight the punk in Cyberpunk. This is immediately apparent by the music that they chose for the Cyberpunk 2077 trailer. They chose a rock punk song rather than some depressing synthetic theme that you would normally find in a cyberpunk piece of work. This emphasis on attitude and style is also something that CD Projekt Red drew from Cyberpunk 2020, where it's not just about doing things, but also about looking good while doing them. The more creative and stylistic you can be with your actions, the more you're rewarded, and the faster your character will grow. The tabletop has even got a gameplay mechanic called Face Downs, where you can stare people down before a fight based on your dice roll as well as your cool and reputation stats. A successful face down means that the loser has to step down or fight with a penalty due to fear. Moments like these all come down to how characters present themselves, what they do and say, how confident they look while doing these things, and how widely their name has spread. The more badassly you do things in Cyberpunk 2020, the more word will spread around, the higher your reputation will go, and the more people will fear you, or the more unwanted attention you'll draw. On the other hand, if you have a tendency of doing lame or cowardly acts, that can have a negative impact in people's perception of you in the future. So yeah, in the world of Mike Pondsmith cyberpunk, it's all about attitude and style. And another important factor is fashion. How you're dressed makes a big statement about your character in 2020. And this is something that CD Projekt Red intends to carry over to 2077. This probably means we can expect a wide selection of outfits and cosmetic cyberware modifications, along with tons of customization options for these things. This emphasis on punk, attitude, style, and fashion that contrasts a grim, dystopian world is one of the things that makes Mike Pondsmith's cyberpunk world so unique from all other cyberpunk and sci-fi games and settings out there. It's very Matrix-esque in the way it mixes both grim surrealism 
and style in the way both people dress and fight. One last thing that will make Cyberpunk 2077 so unique is its character classes. Mike Pondsmith confirmed recently that every class from Cyberpunk 2020 would be featured in 2077, and that's great news considering the diverse selection of unique classes it offers. You've got Rocker Boys, your rebel rock stars, Solos, your killers for hire, Netrunners, your computer hackers, Techies, your mechanics and doctors, Medias, your newsmen and reporters, Cops, your lawmen and law enforcers, Corporates, your businessmen and business raiders, Fixers, your deal makers, smugglers and brokers, and Nomads, your road warriors and gypsies. Classes like Solos, Netrunners, Techies, Cops and Fixers are easy to picture in a video game environment, but then you've got unusual ones like Rocker Boys, Medias and Corporates. The amount of variety in these classes from both a conceptual and role-playing standpoint is really unlike anything I've seen in a game, and I'm excited to see how it all pans out. Now, normally the term classes is mainly associated with a character's profession and skill sets. But what's cool about classes in Mike Pondsmith Cyberpunk is that it takes the concept a step further by defining not just a character's profession or skill set, but also their role in society, their backstories and lifestyle. This is such a fundamental aspect, in fact, that instead of calling them classes, Cyberpunk 2020 calls them roles. In typical fantasy, classes often bog down to whether a person is better with swords, magic, or subterfuge. In typical Cyberpunk, you can make your character specialize in guns, hacking, or stealth. It's usually about what your character can do rather than who your character is. Roles, on the other hand, define both professions and skill sets, as well as a character's core identity and where they fit within the world. They are roles in a very literal sense. Being a rocker boy isn't just about having the ability to charm and influence large crowds of people. It's also about living the life of a musician and eventually celebrity. Being a nomad isn't just about being fearsome at fighting, it's also about being part of a wolf-like pack about community and about the freedom of roaming the roads. Being a solo isn't just about being good at killing, it's also about living the life of a mercenary and a hired killer, which are high on demand in this world. Being a cop isn't just about being versatile in combat, it's also about all of the benefits and baggage that the lifestyle entails. Every role in Cyberpunk 2020 has a different place in this high-tech, low-life society. And this is an aspect that CD Projekt Red intends to carry over for Cyberpunk 2077. This means that playing as different roles in this game may allow players to not just experience different passive and active skills, but also different lifestyles, role-playing opportunities, and different stories in general. If this is something that they can pull off and bring to life in tangible gameplay form, and if they can make each role compelling, then Cyberpunk 2077 may reach new heights when it comes to the realm of role-playing video games. All right, so to sum everything up, I think Cyberpunk 2077 will be unique, disruptive, and refreshing as a role-playing video game for four reasons. One, it's taking on the underrepresented cyberpunk genre, which by itself already separates it from your typical sci-fi. After all, whereas sci-fi is all about that very distant future, cyberpunk is about the not-so-distant future. This is gonna be a true-to-form, high-tech, low-life cyberpunk setting with the expansiveness and epicness of a CD Projekt Red game. Two, three, and four. Within the cyberpunk genre, it will be unique in that it will emphasize street stories rather than epic conflicts, grand conspiracies, and high-level politics, in that it will emphasize the punk aspect of cyberpunk through style, attitude, and fashion, and in that it will feature roles over classes that will emphasize not just distinct professions and skills, but also distinct lifestyles, background stories, and societal roles within this decayed, futuristic, dystopian world. I seriously cannot fucking wait. Now it's just a matter of waiting and hoping that they'll deliver. It is an ambitious project for sure, but if there is one studio that I trust to pull this off, it is CD Projekt Red, one of few remaining good companies in talent and morals. So yeah, there you go, folks, why I think 
Cyberpunk 2077 will stand out not just from sci-fi games, but also from cyberpunk games out there. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you enjoy my content in general, consider supporting me on Patreon to help our community stay independent from corporate interference. And to be further updated on all things cyberpunk, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out. <laughs>